stories of the Anthropocene Festival. And we are talking about the Gilmeyana. So, Greg, we are here again with this uh, auspicious program that we have been doing uh, probably since three years, right? Yeah, it started, well, the plans for it, I think, started in 2013 when the Environmental Humanities Laboratory in Stockholm and the Center for Cultural History and Environment in Madison and the Rachel Carson Center for Environment and Society in Munich, in Munich uh, got together and started hashing out plans for this Environmental Futures Project. And it's so amazing to be here uh, in Stockholm in the, in the bowels of what was, I understand, the first experimental reactor uh, in Sweden. Uh, really just coming after a, a couple months ago when the working group for the Anthropocene uh, recently announced 1950 as the marking point of starting date for the Anthropocene because of the atomic bomb and uh, traces of plutonium detectable through the atmosphere. But maybe we can say something more about when we started in Madison with the swan. Yeah, so in 2014 in the fall, uh, we hosted this really performative uh, workshop, the Anthropocene Slam, a cabinet of curiosities that um, brought together artists and activists and academics and writers uh, from all over the world who had uh, entered into a competition in which we asked people to pitch objects that um, made us think about and interrogate and, and implicate us uh, as a human species and at a scale of, of planetary level change. And um, the slam was a kind of double entendre because at the one time we were um, embracing the concept of the Anthropocene, but also really trying to interrogate it um, and push back against it in important ways. Well, I, I was there and I can tell you that for me it was probably the best academic event I have ever been. And basically it was challenging, it was experimental and it was a lot of fun. I think that this was amazing, no? I remember, I believe that once Foucault said that you don't need to be said to be a militant, right? And so maybe we can, you know, rephrase and say you don't need to be, you know, too boring to be an academic or a scholar. Yeah. So it was really fun. And I was, you know, people were inspired to toss away their ideas that they had come with and uh, one person that night rewrote his whole piece and uh, turned it into a play that was performed the next day. Yeah. Um, remember we made uh, origami passenger pigeons and flew them uh, around the room uh, 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 trying to get the sense of what it was like to have millions of birds flying overhead in the, in yes. the 19th century in, in America and, and a, a species that, that went, has since gone extinct. Absolutely. It was fun. It was fun, it was engaging, I agree. And maybe we can say something about what happened after the slam. Because we had another meeting in Munich at Rachel Carson Center, the other partner in this, uh, um, in this common project. And we are now working on a book. And uh, we are all together editors of the book. I should say that probably Greg is the main editor beyond this. And then it's me and Rob Emmett. And we are trying precisely to kind of translate that same kind of uh, effort and of um, conatus, I might say, in the essays in this book. And the centrality of the object is still very important, very relevant. No? Yeah. And we are also very lucky because we are able to uh, bring a world-class uh, photographer, right? Yeah, so we, uh, you know, that project is materialized into this book, Remains of the Anthropocene, that will be published by the University of Chicago Press uh, next fall, fall of 2017, and, and we were really fortunate to get Tim Flash, who is this amazing uh, London-based photographer, uh, best known for his uh, animal images, which are some of the most widely uh, circulating images on Getty, uh, to come and photograph the objects. There's 15 objects which were housed in a kind of cabinet of curiosities at the Deutsches Museum's Welcome to the Anthropocene exhibit. And Tim spent a week, uh, uh, a, a few weeks ago, uh, photographing these objects to really bring them in, into a kind of aesthetic space that is completely 
inquisitive and curious and really makes you want to know more about them. And then, and then the essays themselves are really more written as pieces of creative nonfiction um, to be able to do that. And we're really fortunate also to have a, a series of uh, really prominent scholars in the environmental humanities, Libby Robin, uh, Rob Nixon, Laura Polito, uh, that are contributing essays uh, to this volume as well. It's true, precisely, I agree with you. And I also think that what you mentioned about the curiosity is something that also we said in our introduction, we can give a very short hint in the book. And what we said in the introduction is that maybe the curiosity per se is even more uh, crucial than the objects, no? you know, to be curious. And this can also help me to uh, shift to the present event that we are hosting here, which is Stories of the Anthropocene uh, Festival. And the uh, slogan of this uh, festival is uh, a guerrilla narrative project, sabotage and survive. So basically the idea is to dismantle the mainstream narratives about and of the Anthropocene and try to explore you know, counter-hegemonic narratives and, you know, to tell the world and, the, you know, the place of humans and non-humans in it in a different way. So we will see what is going to happen in the next four days. Yeah, and it's great, you know, because I think at the Anthropocene Slam, one of the things that we realized coming out of that was how Eurocentric so many of the objects were, right? And, and how lacking uh, kind of perspectives from the global south or uh, from peoples around the world that are facing these huge environmental justices, facing these huge inequitable uh, environmental burdens, and how lacking um, their stories were, uh, are, or and are in, in the kind of you know uh, totalizing narrative of the Anthropocene. And so it's great with this event and stories of the Anthropocene to really try and begin to gather stories from these other places that um, really start to interrogate the we uh, that's so often invoked in the Anthropocene. Yeah, indeed. We will uh, have a few stories from Africa, from Latin America, from India, and, um, and yes, we, we are working very hard to try to bring this different or other perspective into the picture. So we hope that uh, you know, this festival can actually, you know, start a new conversation about the place of the humanities in the understanding of the Anthropocene and maybe, in, you know, also looking at it from a critical or, if you wish, radical perspective. So maybe we should move to the video. <laughs> Festival.